Good morning, guys. Um, just a quick one. Um, today, we're just going to learn how to build some a procedural blueprint, um, a procedural floor or wall blueprint that can be used to make um, big walls and floors like really quickly for designing levels and things like that. Um, super simple. It's got a little bit of maths in it, but we'll be fine. Um, so let's just get started. Go into your content browser, right-click, new folder, and just call this procedural gen or something like that. Open that up new blueprint um, of type actor and just call this PG floor BP just like that alright open that up um, go add component at the top and type in static mesh and we want instant static mesh not just a regular static mesh but instant static mesh um, leave that like that um, into static mesh go in here and type in floor 400 by 400 and you can see that right there like that um, actually, no, maybe we don't want that one. Maybe we want wall. I think it was called wall. Yeah, we want wall and we want that to be... Oh, it could be 500 by 500. Yeah, maybe let's try 500 by 500. Um, and where it says instances, just add one instance so you can see what that looks like. So just like that, 500 by 500. That's a nice um, size. So what we're going to be creating um, is... A system where we can input a number like a grid of values like whether it'd be like 5 by 5 or 5 by 10 or something and then we're gonna it's gonna instantly create a wall out of those um, numbers so in construction script we're gonna have two for loops one for X and one for Y so for loop there like that copy paste for loop there like that um, last index will go minus integer man my hands are freezing today I need some gloves or something. Um, and off of this top one here, we're going to promote that to a variable, and this is going to be called numx, like that. And then we're going to copy that little minus node, hook that up into last index here, and then create a variable here called numy. And we're going to make those two public down here, just like that. And the reason you want this to be minus one is because this is zero base. So for example, if this were one, um, 1 minus 1 is 0, so first index is 0, last index is 0, this will only run one time. Um, if this were just 1, like that, it would run for 0, and it would also run for 1, so it would run twice when you only wanted it to run once. So that's why you have the minus thing there. So just bring that over here like this. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to promote off this index like that, and we're going to say loop x with three zeros because that's how we do and then off of this one we're going to say loop y with <laughs> with a capital o jesus christ my hands hurt it hurts to type i'm going to stop complaining now <laughs> and the reason that we do that is we just want to cache those values off so that we can use them later without dragging this across the whole map across the blueprint. Okay, so now grab your instance static mesh and say add instance like that. And this just creates a copy of the static mesh and we get a location, a transform thing here so we can say break this. Oops, oh sorry, we want make transform. Yeah, make transform is the one we want. Um, scale is fine, rotation is fine. The only thing that we really care about is the location. So we can say make vector like that and the location that we want it to spawn at um, will just be the size of the static mesh which is 500 multiplied by whichever loop number it is so we can grab our loop x like that and we can go times by float and we'll put in 500 because it was a 500 mesh like that so we can put that into x and then we can copy and paste this and then grab our loop y like that and then put that into y and that should do us, I believe. So go into your viewport. You can delete the instance that was in here. And then for num x, type in maybe 5. And for num y, type in, um, I don't know, 2. Boom. There we go. We've got a 2 by 5 wall. Uh, is it a 2 by 5? It must be. I'm not sure. What if I type in a 1 for num y? Ah, I see that. We have a problem. 
So if we type in 2, it's gone in front like that instead of upwards. And that's because I hooked it up into Y instead of um, Z. So, oh no, we're making a floor, not a wall. So what we want then is we want to just rotate our instant static mesh just like that, I guess. But then why has it been all funny and spawning that way? Um, maybe it's got something to do with this transform. Instance transform. Um, well, we could just plug this into Z. So plug your loop Y into loop Z. There we go. Now we've got a floor. And if you want a wall, you can just rotate it like that. And you've got a wall. Um, we might as well just rename this. Oh, no, I can't be bothered. So let's just rotate this down so it's like a floor, just like that. And now, yeah, numx is, um, if you look at your little coordinates down there, numx is how many that way, num y is how many that way. So it makes sense. And it's the, just ignore the fact that that's plugged into Z and you'll be, you'll be sweet. Okay. Um, another thing that we could do is we can collapse all of this here. Um... I believe, and we'll just call that make wall, like that. And if we grab our instant static mesh like that, and we can just say set material, like this. And then off of material, you can just promote that to a variable and just call that material. And the default material, I'll oh, make that public by the way. And the default material, ah, oh, okay, that caused a problem. All right, so we need to expand that. How about we just undo all of that so we don't cause any problems? So I'm undoing that function, how I collapse that to a function, and the reason why that didn't work is because this is a local variable um, specific to the construction script, and if that were put in a function, um, it won't be able to read that variable. So let's just leave that out there like that, that's fine. And then if I compile, that's all good. Um, grab your instant static mesh, type in set material, like that hook that up into this thing over here and promote material to a variable which can just be called mat, make that public um, compile, save and then change the default to just cube material or something boring as hell alright, that's this done so now how this works is say we want to build some floors real quick and we're not exactly sure how big we want to build them actually let's just delete that, turn your snapping on and turn this to 500 because that was the size of the floor so snap this down there, just like that. Um, it's not going to snap to the edge of this because this wasn't built for a 500 by... It wasn't built with the 500 snapping in mind. So we got this now. Um, we can change the size of this to literally whatever we want. So that can be 1 by, I don't know, 7. Say you wanted this to be part of your level and then you can grab this, alt-drag and copy it out. So now we can snap this up here like that and say we want you to be, I don't know, that way by like that or something. Um, and you can see how quickly this lets you build levels, basically. So you can build this out like that. Um, you can build a massive grid kind of thing, just like this. Something like that, you know. Um, you could build some walls. So we could grab this and I could hold Alt and then drag this like that. Maybe turn your snapping for 45 for the rotation. That makes it a bit easier. Um, so this helps you add walls. So I could do the same with this, like that make that a bit shorter um, yeah so this is how you can build really quickly um, and say you wanted to change the material as well you just click down here and you just change the material just give it a second to compile but um, yeah easy as easy as that it's a really good way to um, speed model levels and to keep everything snapped to the same grid so that it's all flush together um, so let's just jump in and have a look at how that looks now so we got our pads and we got our pretty pretty walls, our proc gen walls. So yeah. You can create entire levels out of this. And if you fall off the map at any time, um, you can put our full volume that we made in one of the earlier tutorials to kill the player and restart the level. So that's it for this one, guys. Um, let me know if you had any questions about that. It's a super cool and handy blueprint to have. Um, maybe in one of the future ones, I can go into building procedural rooms as well. Like, you can set it up so that the floor generates, but you can also automatically generate, like, walls along each side um, of a specified height 
You can um, have the option down here to add in doors in as well. Um, spawn a ceiling, like the stuff that the potential that you can, um, the potential of things that you can create with procedural generated blueprints is just insane. It just helps you build things like insanely quick. Um, and it's a, it's a cool challenge to make. Like it's a kind of meta challenge because you're thinking about um, whenever you're doing procedural generation, you're kind of thinking about what are the rules that I use when I'm designing a level? Like, do I want things to snap? Do I want things to look like this or whatever? And then what you're trying to do is you're taking those principles and then you're trying to put them into mathematical form into here, um, which is a, it's a mental exercise and it's really cool because it gets you thinking in terms of like um, exact solutions and you try to really get to the essence of what you're doing in level design. And then once you make that procedural and automated in here, it's like, you it's a insanely powerful tool to just absolutely just pump your creativity and just to help you um, make insane stuff. So I'm going to leave that right there. Um, let me know if you have any questions, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.